The Boston City Council recently approved a new policy on the purchase of food, especially for meals in the local public schools. The goal was food that's more healthy and locally sourced, and the city would avoid options in food that are more harmful to the environment or involve more exploitation of workers and animals. The measure was supported by a coalition managed by the Center for Good Food Purchasing. We'd like to welcome one of the supporters, the senior organizer with Corporate Accountability, Alexa Kaczmarski. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Alexa. Thank you for having me. First of all, talk about your organization and its part in the campaign to get this approved. Yeah, so Corporate Accountability is a 40-year-old organization that challenges uh, transnational corporations for their human rights and environmental abuses. And I work on our food campaign, which mostly challenges the uh, junk food industry for marketing to kids and labor abuses and political manipulation and lobbying. So we got involved with this through our uh, work with a large coalition of other food justice organizations that are working on similar policies around the country. Now, you make it sound like, you know, national groups, but, but what about the local element here? W were they involved in this too? Absolutely. The coalition was made up of majority local Boston groups, including the MSPCA and some local labor union groups, as well as Massachusetts Farm to School and other uh, farm to institution local organizations. Well, the people most directly affected by this, by, uh, with sheer numbers, I guess it would be the families with kids in the Boston public schools. So what about, I mean, were they present in this campaign at all too? Yeah, parents and students were very involved as well. Boston Student Advisory Council, BSAC, was, uh, is a member of the coalition, and then we had a number of parents represented, represented as well. Um, and one parent spoke on the official panel at the ordinances hearing at uh, City Council a couple months ago. I know this is not the first step the city has taken toward more healthy food, especially for kids in the schools, but, but how does this change what we've had before this was passed? So when, you know, when we talk about food policy, we often only think about the end result, how nutritious the food is or the access to food. And one of the beautiful things about the good food purchasing policy is that it addresses a number of issues up and down the food chain. So from seed to plate, our food system is harming the planet, animals, our bodies, and workers. Um, and rather than just focusing on one element of that, the good food purchasing policy addresses a number of them at their root causes because of its uh, commitment to five core value areas, which include nutrition, sustainability, valued workforce, so labor, animal welfare, and local economies. Well, uh, one question, is there a health risk in the food that kids have been eating up until this point at least? I'm not sure about that. Um, the other good thing about the policy is that it doesn't pick winners and losers. So Revolution Foods, the current uh, company that has a contract with Boston Public Schools, has the opportunity to work with BPS and the city of Boston to ensure that it is or is going to meet the standards. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to change. Locally sourced food, it, it could be fresher, it could be less harmful to the environment because there's less fuel to get it here. Yeah. But what about jobs for people producing that food? Yeah, so we've seen um, in cities that have already passed GFPP, uh, especially in Los Angeles, the um, a influx of money has come into the local economy and hundreds of new jobs were created within Los Angeles. And it's interesting, you know, I think that one of the supporters of the measure in Boston was from a, a local business incubator, Jen Feigl at Commonwealth Kitchen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so we are hoping, you know, the, this policy only impacts um, public institutions that purchase food. We're hoping it can be replicated among private institutions like hospitals and prisons within Boston and beyond, because they have uh, significant resources that they're spending on food. This is being the news, and we're talking with Alexa Kaczmarski from Corporate Accountability. Uh, Alexa, what, what about figuring out wh whether the food that we're buying here in the city uh, meets the standards? I mean, how, how do you figure that out? So there's actually a third party organization that has been working with cities that have passed good food purchasing policies around the country called the Center for Good Food Purchasing. And they really dig in with the vendors and uh, producers to figure out what standards they are at and where they and create a plan so that they can meet the highest level of standards. Uh, one of the other dimensions here is you're also talk talking about food policy that causes less harm for workers or even animals. What exactly do you mean by that? 
So the coalition here in Boston had strong uh, support from UFCW local chapter 1445 as well as the local MSPCA advocacy committee um, and there's some of the strongest worker and labor rights language in the ordinance, um, including right to organize a union, health care, paid family leave, et cetera, um, and then animal welfare standards up to the highest current. Now, one of the other concerns in this campaign around the country is, I guess, leverage versus the big corporations. Um, uh, what's the problem with big corporations right now that you're most concerned with? So many. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we've seen power be concentrated into the hands of a few global corporations that really have a stranglehold over our food system. Um, the top three corporations control 90% of the poultry industry in the United States. And there is a strength and a uh, benefit to sourcing food from multiple different vendors and farms. I mean, we have to look no further than health outbreaks like the E. coli um, and other foodborne illnesses that we saw sweeping the country that were traced back to one farm or, or one corporation. So sourcing from multiple different um, farms and vendors has, has its benefit. Another thing I'm sure people are more worried about these days is what's added to the foods for one reason or another. Uh, what about your concerns in that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, not only are pesticides you can have hormones in this one too, right? Uh, the organic standards that are within one level of the standards of the of the GFPP um, don't allow GMO. Right. By the way, it, it, now that this has been introduced in some other cities already, is there anything about how people are reacting to it, whether it's causing any you know, financial burdens for any of these cities? So it's really up to the institution like Boston Public Schools to work with the city to figure out those details. Um, but what we have seen in the cities that have passed this is that it doesn't really change the bottom line cost-wise either way. And we have seen cities actually save money after implementing GFPP, which happened in Oakland. Um, and you know the, the evidence is that when GFPP is implemented, we see better food, healthier food, better jobs, better working conditions, and more money in the local economy. Well, we should finally mention that people want some more information about this campaign as it evolves. You get a website where they can check that out? Yeah, so our website is corporateaccountability.org, and then um, goodfoodcities.org details all the cities that are currently working on GFPP policies and ones that have already passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alexa Kaczmarski from Corporate Accountability.